Hi everyone, today we're going to be making the paper bag maxi skirt. Now, I went ahead and made mine out of denim fabric, but you can pretty much use any fabric of your choice. Now, I was a little tempted to go ahead and make this using Ankara, but I figured, let me switch it up. I always make all of my skirts out of Ankara. I don't have a denim skirt, so I went ahead and used denim fabric. But you already know my next uh, paper bag skirt is definitely going to be made out of Ankara. And on my blog I have some different fabric suggestions so you can head over there if you want some different inspiration for some fabric that you might want to use. And I also have some different links to some denim fabric on there as well. And during the video, I'm going to be um, giving out the different measurements that you will need to be able to calculate how much fabric and how to do all that good stuff. But if you are one of my VIPs, I went ahead and sent you the a link. It's a PDF where it has all the different measurements that you need for this video. So if you're a person who likes to have it on paper right in front of you to keep track, to go back and be able to do the, the skirt multiple times, then that PDF is for you. If you are not one of my VIPs, go ahead and subscribe and you will be able to subscribe to the blog and you will be able to download that PDF instantly. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. So for this tutorial, you're going to need your fabric. I'm using denim fabric, but you can use whatever you'd like. You'll need about one yard of one inch elastic. You'll need some sewing pins. If you are using denim fabric, uh, if you are using denim fabric, you will need some um, needles, especially for denim. You will also need a ruler. I'll probably be alternating between these two. You'll need some fabric scissors. You'll need some thread. I'm using denim thread. You'll also need a fabric marking tool and the pocket pattern. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, now it's time to do our measurements. So you can follow along with me using the measurement guide. So first thing we need to do is do our skirt measurements. So to start off, we do our length. So what you want to do is measure from your belly button down to where you want your skirt to stop. So for me, that is 41 inches. The next thing that we need to do is transfer this number down here. So it says line one, transferring it down. It's labeled line one. And then you want to add eight inches. So for me, my total length of my skirt needs to be 49 inches. Now we added 8 because that's going to be for our waistband and our hem. Now we want to do our width. So what you want to do is go ahead and measure your hips and write that down. So for me, that's 41 inches. And that is also going to be the width for our skirt panel. Well, we'll have two skirt panels. And then here, this is just like a visual you can have for yourself if you want to reference. So the length of my skirt is 49 inches and the width is 41. So this is for each skirt panel. These will be the measurements and we will need two of these. All right, let's go ahead and calculate how much fabric that we need. So step one, we need to take our, what is your skirt length? So here, we, already, we have already done that. So for me, that was 49 inches, and I'm going to write that number here. Now step two, we need to multiply the length by two. So I'm going to just now fill that number in. My length was 49, multiply that times two, that gives me 98. Now step three, we need to divide line two, which was this line up here, by 36. So that's 98. 8 divided by 36 which equals 2.72 now it's like 2.72222 right so down here I wrote just um, when you put these when you put when you get a number in your calculator you might have a number that's close to 0.25 or 0.5 or 0.75 so for me my the the number after my decimal is close to 0.275, so that's about three-fourths of an inch. So I need about two and three-fourths of a yard of fabric to make my skirt. So that's what these numbers down here are. It's just referencing once you plug 
once you do so, the division inside your calculator, you might get some decimal number. So you can reference these if you're trying to figure out, all right, what does my decimal represent? Also on the PDF guide, I've included just a few sewing terms that I use throughout the video. So cross grain, I know some people are like, what the heck is that? All this sewing language and stuff. But um, so I just included a, some definitions for your reference. So cross grain, grain and salvage edge. Those are some of the things that I say in the video. And also here are some additional resources. So if you want to know how you can finish off the uh, seams that you have, because sometimes I say use your serger or zigzag stitch, but I have a board on Pinterest with different um, articles that talk about the different ways to finish off your hems. All right, so I went ahead and laid out my fabric and I have the selvage edge to the selvage edge here and my fabric is on the fold. So what we want to do is uh, cut out our panels next. So I'm going to be cutting out my fabric on the cross grain because I don't have enough. And sometimes I also like to cut on the cross grain because I the pattern that I'm using, the, um, the fabric, I like the cross grain direction that it's going, so that's why I use the cross grain. Uh, so first I'll demonstrate how to cut out your panels on the cross grain, and then I will demonstrate how to cut it out on the grain. So first, when I'm cutting out on the cross grain, I like to even up this side here because when they cut it at the fabric store, you know, it's not really even. So I like to use my mat and just clean up the edge so that I have straight lines. Okay, so next we need to measure the width of each of our panels. Now for me, that was 41 inches, so I'm going to measure over 41 inches. I'm going to make a mark. So I measured out the width of my fabric, which is 41 inches. Now I need to measure the length for each panel. So for me, my total length needs to be 49 inches. So because my fabric is on the fold, I'm going to divide that number by 2. So 49 divided by 2 is 24 and a half. So I'm measuring down 24 and a half. And I'm going to make a mark. From the top of the fold down, I'm going to continue marking 24 and a half inches. And then once I'm done marking all the way across, I'm going to connect all of these markings together. Now I'm going to cut along the lines that I made. Alright, so I just went ahead and repositioned my fabric. So to cut out your second panel, what you want to do is just lay your first panel right on top. And just make sure everything is nice and smooth and lined up. Just, yeah, smooth out everything. But I'm actually, this isn't like thick enough for how I want my skirt to be. 
So I'm actually going to I'm like probably like what the heck is she doing? So let me explain myself. So after I cut my first panel, I had these two pieces left over. How I would have liked for them to be still connected to each other so that I could have had like a big, just one big strip left, one long piece, because I want to make a belt. So this is like seven inches. Okay, so now I'm just readjusting my fabric because both of those pieces equaled seven inches all together. I'm just making sure that I have one piece down at the bottom that measures out to be seven inches. Now you don't have to do this. You know, I'm doing the most because I like to have leftover fabric and I really wanted that belt. So you do not need to do what I did. But if you um, if you would like because you want to make the belt or you don't know how much fabric you'll have left over for the belt, you can do this as well. But if you do not want to, you do not have to. All right, so now I'm going to take my first panel and lay it right on top. And now I'm just using my first panel as a guide to help me cut out my second panel. And voila, I got this left over. All right, so if you are cutting yours out on the grain, you will be working still with the selvage edge to the selvage edge together and working on the fold. And we're going to be measuring our skirt panel. Uh, this will be the top of your skirt panel down to the bottom. So what you want to do is first take your width measurement. So for me, mine was 41. And you want to divide that by 2. So for me, that's 20 and a half. So I'm going to take that measurement and measure my width. And I'm going to make a marking. And the reason why we um, the reason why we divided it by two is because our fabric is on the fold. So now that you have your width measured, you want to measure down your length. So for me, that was 49. And because this is already my other skirt panel, I can't measure down 49 inches. So just pretend with me. So I'll pretend that this is 49 inches. So then you would measure down your length. And then to close it up, just you can close it up at the end. And then you would go ahead and cut along those markings that you made. And that would be your skirt panel, your first skirt panel. Then after you cut out one, you can then lay this piece right on top of the rest of your fabric to cut out your second panel. But I'm not going to cut this out because this is already my panel piece. Alright, now it's time to cut out our pockets. We need a total of four. So right now I have my uh, fabric uh, right on top of each other. and. Sometimes I use, I'm going to use my pins to go ahead and hold this pocket pattern in place. Sometimes I use pattern weights, but when I'm cutting out my pocket, I don't know why I just prefer to use pins. I think that sometimes my pattern weights 
move on me. Okay, once you're done cutting out your pocket, we need to clip our notches. So right where you see the triangles, you just want to make a little snip. You don't need to cut too far. Just enough to let you know the top to mark the top and uh, bottom of your pocket. Now we need two more. Okay, and down here is our belt measurements. So you have two options for your belt measurement. You can either have, have a slight gap in the waist part like I have, or if you're looking to go for a more um, no gap or less of a gap in the waist belt, you can use this option here. So I did option one. So what you want to do is measure your waist. So for me, that's 28, and you subtract two. So that's 26 and the width of the belt needs to be 4 inches. So I'm going with option 1. So I will cut out a piece that is 26 inches by 4 inches. Now if you want to go with option 2, you'll still measure your waist. But you will add an inch. And the width will still be the same, 4 inches. So you're doing one or the other, option 1 or option 2 and I'm going with option one. Now the ties, the length of your tie needs to be, so you'll be cutting two of these, and they need to measure 20 inches long by 1.5 inches wide. The finished pieces for my belt. So I have the main piece, which is 26 inches by my wannabe four inches almost. And the reason I did that is because when we get ready to sew this up, I want my finished belt to be about an inch and a half. So after we take off the half an inch, the belt will be about an inch and a half thick. So if you want your belt to be two inches, then you would cut yours five inches thick. And then after you fold it in half and have your seam allowance, it'll end up being two inches. And then for the ties, these are uh, 20 inches long and they're an inch and a half wide. Okay, so working on the right side of your, uh, work, working on the right side, we need to make some markings. So I'm looking at the top edge of the skirt we need to measure down a half an inch from the top. So using my marking tool, I'm going to measure down half an inch. Okay, now from this half an inch mark, we need to measure down one and one fourth inch. Now we are inserting elastic that is one inch thick. So you can do one inch if one and one fourth is too tedious for you. I just like having that extra fourth of an inch for wiggle room. So I'm going to measure down from this line one and one-fourth of an inch. Okay, now I'm on the wrong side of my fabric. 
still working at the top edge of the skirt we want to measure down seven inches and this is going to be the fold line for our skirt now normally you would have the fold line is where you would fold it and meet it but I like to do the fold line so that when I folded it it's going to meet that mark. We're going to measure down seven inches from the top and make a mark all the way across. Okay, now that you have made your folding line, I like to do my folding line this way. That way I can fold my fabric over and bring the top edge of the fabric down to this line. And then I like to take my iron and press along the top edge. Next, go ahead and grab your ruler, two of the pocket pieces, and some pins. Now I have my fabric laid with the right side facing up, and this is the top part of our skirt. So what we want to do is take your ruler and you want to mark six inches, six and a half inches down from the top and make a mark. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side marking down six and a half inches and making a mark. Okay, next take your pocket pieces and we're going to lay these right sides together. So right where you made that six and a half inch mark, you're going to lay, make sure the top of the pocket pattern touches there and you're lining it up now go ahead and pin both of these in place All right, and now we will go ahead and sew these pockets in place. So in between the top and the bottom, in between here and here, we're going to do a stitch. All right, starting at the top of the pocket, I have the edge lined up with the edge of the presser foot. I'm going to lower my needle, go ahead and start sewing, back stitch. And you can go ahead and do the same exact thing for the other all right, after you have sewn your pockets, go ahead and lay them open like this and press them out. Next, go ahead and lay one of the panels with the right side facing up. Then take your other panel 
and lay it right on top making sure now that the right side is touching the right side and you're going to line up the top edge make sure the top edge and the pockets are nicely aligned and we're getting ready to pin All right, now that everything is nice and smooth, grab your pins and we're going to stitch all the way down the skirt and around the pocket area. And in the pocket area, find where you made those two clippings. So right towards the top of the pocket, there was one clipping. Place a pin there. And towards the bottom of the pocket, we also made a clipping. Add a pin there. So when we get ready to go to our machine, we're first going to start from the bottom of the skirt, make our way up. Then when we get to this pin, we'll stop, sew around, and stop here. Then we'll start a new stitch coming down until we get to our other pin in our pocket. Okay, do the, other, do the same thing to the other side, and let's take this to our machine and sew up the pockets. All right, starting at the bottom of the skirt, we're going to sew a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And we're going to sew all the way until we get to that notch in our pocket. So go ahead and lower your needle, start sewing, back stitch. All right, so I'm getting close to the notch at the bottom of my pocket. So I'm going to keep sewing until I meet that point. Once you get to that needle, uh, that pin, go ahead and lower your needle and then you'll raise up your presser foot and you're going to pivot your fabric. Now we're going to uh, lo go ahead and lower your presser foot and now we're going to sew up this pocket. Now as you start sewing, you want to get right back on track to sewing 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So now I've lined my pocket back up with 5 eighths of an inch and as you're sewing up this pocket you're going to, I'm kind of applying pressure and pivoting uh, to make the curved, uh, yeah, to follow the curve of the pocket. Now you can finish off this edge of your pocket with um, zigzag stitch, serger. I'm probably going to use my pinking shears. All right, now working at the top edge of our skirt, we're going to sew down until we get to that top notch in our pocket piece. So go ahead and lower your needle, start sewing, back stitch. And I'm also using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Once you get to the notch that you made at the top of the pocket, just go ahead and backstitch. 
And I just did it a couple of times to reinforce it. And this is what my pocket looks like after I use my pinking shears.